So this morning, Bud and the cow dogs and I are out here getting these milk cows in. This one here is uh, Esther, and there's one laying down over here. Maybe you just see it right there. That's Astrid. You gotta put them in with the yearlings so they can get bred, but they've got calves that are out here somewhere. So I don't know if any of you ever watched that Canadian show. It's called Man Tracker, but I'm gonna have to man tracker to find where their calves are at because they're not right here anywhere and they're not very small calves so it shouldn't be too hard to find but the grass in here is pretty tall but uh, Esther there she's pretty notorious for just leaving her calf and walking pretty far off and then or Esther is so this morning the dogs Bud and I are out here getting these milk cows in this one on the left is Esther, and the one there on the right is Astrid. I'm going to put them back in this pasture with those yearlings so they can get bred by their, those bulls. But they both have calves. They're not with their calves, so they're out here somewhere. Um, Esther was laying right here in the grass, and I figured the calves were around her, but she's kind of notorious for leaving her calf on the other side of the pasture. Astrid, on the other hand, is usually pretty good about it, so... I don't know if any of you ever watched that show back in the day out of Canada. It's called Man Tracker, but I'm not the calf tracker and find these calves. I can see where these cows have laid down and you can see where they walk down right here and go see where their calves are at, I guess. Now you're probably thinking, you know, put the dogs on them or something and they'll go pick up their calves. But these aren't, these aren't like beef cattle like that. They won't just go find their calves. These are milk cows and they'll... I guess I don't know. Get to their calves when they get to them. So that's why I'm having to go out here on my own. I already tried kind of pushing them around and they just stand there looking at me. So put the dogs on them a little bit. They didn't go find their calves, so I'm going to go try and find them. So I saw their tracks coming back up this way or that they'd come from this way. And there the little shits are right there. Like in the ditch. Well, they're headed down to their mamas, so scoop them up, and then I'll take them over here to the corral and take them out to that pasture. Hopefully it all goes like that. Sometimes milk cows can be an epic pain in the ass. We'll see. So if you're thinking about getting a family milk cow, I can give you a little bit of advice or share some of my experiences. Both of these are out of two different jerseys. That's what we had before. Uh, Jersey's made a lot of milk and a lot of really good milk, but they are just they took a lot of upkeep You had to pour the COB to them So they always looked like they were starving to death and then they always just got some mastitis or some damn thing And they were hard to breed back up um, So we crossed these ones cross with a shorthorn and ones cross with an Angus and they're in really good condition and To be honest a Jersey makes too much milk for like a family of four you'll you'll never use up all that milk so I think these We'll make just the right amount. We don't have to pour the feed to them. So I would recommend that getting something that's crossed or even just a, a straight shorthorn. We've used those before. Or we've used one before and, and she did really good. Made a lot of milk and always looked good. So, And then a milking machine, unless you have like three or four, it's not really worth it. It takes just as long to clean the damn thing as it does to milk a cow by hand. So you're not really saving any time. So... Uh, yeah other than that they're kind of handy to have around it's nice to be able to just walk past the milk and cream and butter aisle and cheese aisle in the grocery store because you just got it at home um, but yeah that's my spiel and advice on milk cows